In the last lecture, you learned about special polar curves such as limassons and roses and observed some of their properties such as their orientation and symmetry. You also learned how to find an equation of the tangent line to polar curves at certain points in their graph. In this lecture video, you will learn how to compute the arc length of polar curves and how to find the area of the regions bounded by polar curves. For the arc length of polar curves, recall that in a smooth parametric curve C, the x and y are both functions of the parameter t. Now, if the parametric curve C is traced exactly once from t equals a to t equals b, then its arc length is given by the following integral. Here, the limits of integration correspond to the endpoints of the interval AB, and the integrand is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the derivatives with respect to the parameter t. Now, consider a smooth polar curve C with equation r equals f of theta, and suppose that this polar curve is traced exactly once from theta equals alpha to theta equals beta. Then, this polar curve C is parametrized by x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Since r is a function of theta, we can replace r with f of theta as follows. And as you can see, x and y are now functions of the parameter theta. So the next thing that we want to do is to find the derivative of x and y with respect to the parameter theta. So by product rule of differentiation, we obtain the following expressions for dx over d theta and for dy over d theta. Okay, so the next step is to take the sum of the squares of these expressions. As a result, we obtain r squared plus the square of dr over d theta. Next, we want to take the integral of the square root of this expression, which leads us to the following formula for the arc length in polar coordinates. So again, given a smooth polar curve C with equation r equals f of theta, which is traced exactly once as theta varies from alpha to beta, then the arc length of C is given by the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of r squared plus the square of dr over d theta, d theta. Let us now use this formula in the following example. Okay, so here we want to find the arc length of the circle r equals 4 cosine theta. Now, this polar curve is a translated circle with the radius 2 okay, and is traced exactly once on the interval 0, pi. And so, for the setup of the integral, we have the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of r squared or square of 4 cosine theta plus the square of its derivative, which is negative 4 sine theta. So simplifying the expression inside the square root, we get 16 cosine squared theta plus 16 sine squared theta or simply square root of 16 or integral from 0 to pi of 4 d theta. Evaluating this integral and uh, evaluating theta from 0 to pi, you will get 4 pi. And so we say that the arc length of the given circle is 4 pi units. If you haven't noticed yet, this result corresponds to the circumference of a circle with radius 2. So recall that the formula for the circumference of a circle is circumference equals 2 times pi times R. And so for a circle of radius r, the circumference is 4 pi units. Okay, So 
This happened as finding the arc length of a circle is equivalent to computing its circumference. Okay, so now let's proceed to the next example where we want to find the length of the cardioid r equals 1 plus cosine theta. Now this polar curve is a cardioid that is oriented to the right and is symmetric about the polar axis as we can see in the following illustration. Okay, so since uh, this cardioid is symmetric about the polar axis, then we can take advantage of its symmetry and we can just consider theta from the interval or from zero to pi. And so the arc length is given by the integral from zero to pi of the square root of the square of r square, ah, the square of one plus cosine theta plus the square of its derivative, which is negative sine theta. And then we just multiply the result by two to get the length of the whole cardioid. Okay, so notice that the expression inside the square root can be written as one plus two cosine of theta plus the square of cosine theta okay. and then plus sine squared of theta. Okay, so notice that the last two terms Okay, so this one is just equal to 1. So 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus 1 gives us 2 plus 2 cosine theta inside the square root. Now using the double angle formula for cosine theta, so let me write that out okay, here. So recall that cosine of say 2a equals 2 times cosine squared of squared of a minus 1. Okay. So using this identity, we can rewrite the expression inside the square root as follows. 4 cosine squared of theta over 2. So notice that we can take this expression out of the square root. And so we get 2 cosine of theta over 2 times 2 or 4 integral from 0 to pi of cosine theta over 2 d theta. Now this is now very simple to integrate and the integral is equal to 8 sine of theta over 2. Now, evaluating theta from 0 to pi, you will get 8 units. And so, the arc length of this cardioid is 8 units. As an exercise, observe what will happen if you did not take advantage of the cardioid symmetry to the polar axis. That is, Observe what will happen if you integrate from 0 to 2 pi instead of from 0 to pi only. Now for our third example, we want to set up the integral that will give us the length of one petal of the rows r equals sine 2 theta. Now this polar curve is a rose with four petals. And one petal of the rows is traced from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 2. And so the arc length is given by the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of square of sine 2 theta plus the square of its derivative, which is 2 cosine 2 theta. Now observe also that this petal is symmetric about pi over 4. So as an alternative solution, we can write L equals twice 
the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the same expression for the integrand. So this ends the discussion for arc lengths. In my next video, I will discuss how to find areas of regions bounded by polar curves.